Hello, my name is David Johnson from Denison Yachting, and today I have the fortune of taking you on a walkthrough on the 34-meter Sunseeker Luna Rosa. Commissioned in 2012, this English-built superyacht stands out for a few reasons. First, she's the most adventure-ready superyacht in her class. Luna Rosa has a full-time crew of five who maintains her in show condition at all times. Every area of this yacht is immaculate and ready to take her next owner on a top tier excursion. Her outdoor guest spaces include an unrivaled flybridge that offers guests several options for enjoying yourself and connecting with your friends. The other most notable exterior space is the Teak Beach located at the transom complete with a fully loaded garage. There are even a few areas on board that have been reimagined, like the aft deck. After we show you these spaces, I'll be taking you through the interior, starting on the main deck and ending with the guest accommodations. In 2019, the owner put her in the yard to prepare for the next season. At this time, she received a navy paint job and was gone over with a fine tooth comb. She also underwent several mechanical updates, including a zero hour rebuild of both generators. This work and these upgrades were added well into 2020 as the owner began preparations for selling Lunarosa. It was in this later yard period where she was upgraded heavily on the interior, including new hardwood floors and fascia boards. Today's walkthrough has a starting on the upper deck where we're first gonna take a look at the jacuzzi and the surrounding area. Back here beneath the open sky is a six sided jacuzzi tub and a set of huge sun pads that surround it. Just outboard of the near full beam sun pad are the life rafts, located on either side of the jacuzzi deck. One thing to love about this area is that it can quickly be covered with a retractable sunshade that extends aft and over the jacuzzi tub. Continuing forward, we next enter the forward half of this full beam flybridge, which is just over 24 feet wide. It's in this area where we first see an alfresco dining table to port. At this custom teak table, there is seating for 12 to gather for lunch. Looking opposite the dinette is a bench seat running up the starboard side. As you see it, it's set up as an oversized sun pad, but there are also high-low cocktail tables that can be raised up to convert the space in the evening. Adjacent is an oversized wet bar to port that comes fully loaded with everything you need to keep a family of 12 going. Found here are two Kenyan barbecues, a sink, two Waco fridges, and an ice maker. Covering most of the flybridge is a molded hardtop that serves as one of her most notable profile lines. The amount of coverage it offers on board is an essential part of this yacht's capabilities but it's also the fact that there is an integrated retractable sunroof that allows her to embody her manufacturer's namesake. Forward and to starboard up here is the upper helm station. Found at this command center are two all weather adjustable helm seats that face the controls you'll be using when the sun is shining and you're off to see the world. This helm is a pared down version of the main helm, which we are going to check out in just a minute you have all of the features you'll need to operate this yacht safely without the need to step into the wheelhouse. Some of what you'll find here are a pair of multi-function displays, engine monitors, and crucial tools like a Simrad autopilot, thruster joysticks, and engine throttles. Leaving the flybridge, let's next take a look at the main helm, which has a raised pilot house configuration. Before we dig into what makes this boat go, let's take a look at the seating. First, there's L-shaped seating in the port aft corner. This is where the owner and captain make the most important decisions of the day. Also of note is that there's a staircase that leads down into the main deck foyer. We'll come back to this later. Turning to the helm, we see that all of the navigation electronics are placed around and below three Hatland 19-inch monitors with time zero chart plotting. Over on the port side are the controls for the yacht's Furuno Open Array 75 nautical mile radar, along with controls for a Simrad AP-50 autopilot. Located center line, forward of the wheel is a track stabilizer control pad and bow and stern thruster joysticks. 
Finally, looking to starboard, we see the engine throttles and VHF radio. From here, let's jump to everybody's favorite end of the Sunseeker, her stern. From the time that the sun starts to set to the moment it comes back up, this area benefits from seven underwater lights that surround the aft end of the yacht. A key design feature back here is her Euro transom, which means that you can access the swim platform from port or starboard. When the platform is raised, you can set out an umbrella and some deck chairs for a bottle of rosé and a sunset. This area is most appreciated when the transom door is raised up and you see that this garage stores everything you need to enjoy the remote beaches around your anchorage. In here, there's a Castoldi 16-foot jet tender with Yanmar 110 horsepower and a Yamaha Wave Runner. When these are out of the garage, they are tied off using these stern cleats. Other features found in the immediate area are the first of two laundry centers and the overhead shower that's built into the transom door. In addition to her functional and oversized stern, one of my favorite features of this yacht is the Bessenzoni Passer Rail where you can board Luna Rosa in style. The first thing you notice when you step onto the aft deck is that it looks nothing like any Sunseeker you've seen before, and that's for the better. In terms of seating, there's a wide L-shaped sofa along with two director's chairs and a teak coffee table. This is part of what the owner thinks of as a private balcony where he can keep an eye on the family. The arrangement you see in the area replaced a more typical dining table, but the dining table that came with the yacht is available to her next owner. This would allow you to seat 12 guests around an oval table. On the starboard side are stairs that lead up to the flybridge, which we've already taken a look at. This draws your eye up to the overhead that covers the entire aft deck and has been outfitted with lighting and Bose speakers. Around the port side, just a few steps up the side deck is the primary entrance into the engine room, which is where we're heading next. Down in the mechanical space are Luna Rosa's twin MTU 16V 2000 M94 engines. These just recently underwent their 4,000 hour services and are captain maintained. Outboard of the engines are two Kohler 65 KW generators that power the house. Also of note in here is an Alpha Laval fuel polisher that filters this yacht's 5,600 gallon fuel tank before it hits the engines. In the starboard aft compartment off of the engine room is an Atlas 75 KVA shore power converter. Also found in here is the main power distribution panel and the Glendenning shore power cable reel. In the port aft compartment is where we have laundry center number two and a brand new Idromar 1150 gallon per day water maker. When Luna Rosa is underway, she has a top speed of 25 knots and a cruise speed of just under 15 knots. In terms of her ride, it's important to note that her track stabilizer system has been completely serviced and actualized. Wrapping up in the mechanical spaces and with the performance numbers, let's next take a look at the bow, which is accessed by port and starboard side decks with teak underfoot. The central guest use of this space revolves around an elevated sun pad with adjustable backs that can be raised up. And then, if you look after the sun pad, you see a long window that connects with the master. We'll point this out again when we are in the owner's accommodations. At the foot of the sun pad is an integrated bench seat that spans the width of the superstructure, giving you a place to sit. Forward of the lounging area are twin Muir 4500 windlasses. These raise and lower a pair of stainless steel anchors. Wrapping up on the foredeck, we are going to spend the rest of today's walkthrough focusing on the interior guest spaces. The first of these areas for us to cover is the salon. This is where we see the perfect balance between large windows and dark upholstery. This is also where some of the best memories on board originate, thanks to the conversation pit taking up almost half of the space. Here there are a pair of matching sofas that face in towards each other. Over on the port side is a 50 inch Samsung TV on a lift. Luna Rosa was custom built by Sunseeker for the original owner. His requirements called for an open main salon, so the room divider between the salon and dining area was removed. 
By eliminating the room divider, this space feels much more open and conducive to relaxing with the family and hosting great meals. Leaving the salon, let's next take a look at the galley. In this chef's galley, three things jump out immediately. The first is that there is an abundance of storage. You also notice the remarkable amount of countertop space. Then finally, you notice that this galley has a split arrangement. Close to the entrance is a new built-in Mealy coffee maker. This is directly above two of the 10 Sub-Zero cold drawers found throughout the galley. Close to these is a Sub-Zero French door fridge with four additional freezer drawers below. The cooking appliances found in here include a pair of ovens, a new Mealy five burner stove, and a microwave oven. Then, stepping into the forward section of the galley, you see that there's a sink in here, a pair of wine coolers, and two more Sub-Zero cold drawers. This is just steps away from the crew mess, which is located in between the galley and the main deck companionway to starboard. In this area, there's a dinette and a handful of tools like a VHF radio and an RD33 data organizer. Forward of the crew mess are stairs that lead down to three crew accommodations, each with its own ensuite with the overall ability to sleep up to seven crew if needed. Leaving the galley for the main deck companionway, we next arrive at the stairs that lead up to the wheelhouse, which is an area we've already taken a look at. The next set of stairs we pass leads down into the lower guest accommodations, which we'll return to in a few minutes. Looking to the starboard side on the main deck companionway is a side deck access door opening forward of midship. Just beyond this watertight door is the dayhead. Heading forward from here, we next arrive in the on-deck master, which is such an impressive space on board Lunarosa. Upon entering, you first see a forward-facing king berth with nightstands to either side. The amount of open floor space in here makes the master feel like a resort. The amount of light that can flood this cabin is incredible and it comes in from all sides. With windows to port and starboard and a skylight found overhead, none of the windows on board function as perfectly as the window that wraps around the front of the space. Directly below this window is a 50 inch TV. A perk of this stateroom's design is the amount of storage in here thanks to the cabinets running up and down both sides of the master. Additional storage is also found in a pair of walk-in closets, including this one seen aft on the port side. From a design perspective, I love the split level layout with the master ensuite on the lower level. When you're down here, you have access to a vanity that faces aft. This is finished with a pair of faucets above a large sink basin. There are also separate glass stalls for the shower and head. Wrapping up in the master, follow me back to the main staircase and down, where we're going to check out the remaining guest accommodations. The aftmost cabins on the lower level are a pair of mirrored VIPs. These both feature a walk around queen berth in a large hull side window. At the foot of the bed is a 32 inch TV, which is just steps outside of a private ensuite with a shower stall. As I mentioned, this cabin is mirrored on the other side of the yacht. That means that you'll have all of the same amenities and features like hanging storage for your guests. Leaving the aft VIPs, you can head forward to another pair of staterooms. These staterooms feature layouts with twin berths that can be pushed together. In addition to the hull window and surrounding storage, the most useful feature in these cabins is the Pullman that hides away neatly when it's not being used. Like the other guest accommodations on board, these forward cabins have en suites with a glass shower stall. Thanks for joining me on today's walkthrough on Luna Rosa. If you have any questions or would like to get on board, please feel free to reach out.